so, is this the end? The culmination of all of our yesterdays. A permanent break to the age of the wheel. We ask for judgment. Well, here it is. Summed up in the fears of a long ago mathematical equation. Fact. Within the next two hours and 17 somewhat minutes, humankind may become the unwelcome memories of a merciless god. Where will you be when the hands of time test their ultimate fate? fate, fate? Welcome to Tapping the Arkansas Paranormal Network. Hello, everybody. I know we've been away for a while. Haven't done anything in a while. We've been busy. Uh, two or three times we've been on the... Uh, well, actually, we've been uh, busy for the, with the uh, Paracon stuff. And uh, kind of gotten away and haven't really done anything. So, anyway. I want to welcome everybody to my show. I am Wayne, your host. And, of course... I am minusing a host, so. <laughs> <coughs> anyway. We will be getting started. We're going to be talking about a little bit about Bigfoot. And maybe he's an alien. I don't believe he's an alien myself. A lot of people think they are, but not me. I really don't think that. Don't believe it for one bit. <coughs> And I know the uh, title on this was uh, "Is Bigfoot an Alien?" Question mark Or does he he real? Mm, that was kind of a mess up. I was trying to hurry up and get the trying to hurry up and get the uh, show up and running, but I messed up on the uh, title. So, <laughs> uh, but I was running late this morning. Anyway, we had an investigation last night, and. Uh, so we got in late and I piled everything in my car and went straight home and then came down here and I've been unloading the car all morning. Get the feed on Facebook up and running. There we go. So I'm kind of running behind on everything. So yeah, everybody kind of bear with me here. I'm trying to get. Like I said, I'm in. I'm uh, all out of whack here. <laughs> trying to get everything up and running. As you can see, I've got my computer up and running on the other side over here. I'm trying to get it all squared away. All the unnecessary stuff that I need going. But anyway, like I said, we had an investigation last night at a uh, cemetery. Um, we've been trying to get to for a while now. actually got to go there last night. Try to get a live feed going last night several times. Uh, it just kind of depends on where you was at at the time, if you had signal. But have a good signal for one area and then walk around and then lose signal and then we go off there and then we go back on. It was kind of off and on all night long. So So anyway, like I said, we are recuperating from the uh, the big event we had uh, on uh, August the 18th, trying to survive the Paracon, which we did. We we had a pretty good turnout. Now, uh, wasn't bad for a first turn, uh, first Paracon. 
But anyway, that's over with, and I was always getting on here. I always want to thank everybody for all our guest speakers that was there, and everybody that attended, and all our vendors that were there. Uh, next year, we are working on Paracon 2019, and we've got a big lineup already. So uh, hopefully we'll have more. Um, want to let everybody know. Um, October the 6th, uh, they're having a Paracon in Little Rock, Arkansas. It's called Arkansas Paranormal Expo 2018. It will be held at the MacArthur Museum. And all proceeds to that Paracon goes to the MacArthur Museum to help it to help them preserve that museum and yes that is the uh, birthplace of the uh, MacArthur so uh, it's a nice place we was down there last year uh, and we're going back this year so the tapping crew is going to be there of course the uh, Arkansas Ghost Hunters will be there too because hmm, we're one um, but we are going to be down there and uh for one day it's it's a two day event but we're only going to be there for one day so it starts early in the morning if I bring it up on my other side over here I'll tell you what what all the gas she's got I'll have to find it so it'll be a little bit It's the 8th Annual Arkansas Paranormal Expo. Alright, let's see here. Bring the uh, big screen up. I see their guest speakers will be uh, Robert Swin. He is a Bigfoot man uh, for that area. Uh, I tried to get him for ours, and uh, but I already had a Bigfoot man talking. That was Rick Marshall. Rick Marshall's from Northwest Arkansas, and Robert Swin, I believe, does the south southern part of Arkansas. Uh, but Robert Swin, uh, he's going to be a speaker, and he's got uh, a lot of Bigfoot stuff. Uh, then you got uh, Anita Two Ball. Uh, she is from uh, Seminole, Oklahoma. She'll be here or there talking. Um, Martha Dicker, I don't know her. So, uh, I don't know if she probably is a psychic. I'm just believing the way that she looks. Uh, Melanie Melanie Rail looks like her name's kind of mixed in with the white the kinks here don't know her either uh, the Murphys will be there and they uh, the Murphys have a um, it's 
called Camp Murphy. Um, I really can't tell you exactly all about them, but um, let's see here if I can get. Anyway, Murphy's, uh, they've got a, uh, sort of like a crystal mine or something rather down there, and uh, it's called, uh, I can't tell you what's name. I have a card right here somewhere with them. But anyway, they're there to speak. Uh, Carol Pate, I don't know her. I assume she, I don't know who she is. I get to meet her, though. Uh, of course, Adrian and Tina Skull. Adrian was... On, uh, at our Paracon, he'll they'll two will be there talking. Heather, uh, Armour, uh, don't know her, and Debbie Z is all it says. Uh, she'll be there talking. I assume these are all maybe uh, some of them may be ghost hunters and some of them may be uh, psychics, phenomena, psychics or whatever. Uh, and of course, uh, Pat Fitzjew, he is the, the one that wrote the Bell Witch. Uh, books, not the Blair Witch, but the Bell Witch, the actual story Bell Witch. He's the one that's all behind the Bell Witch project, so uh, he'll be there talking. So they've got a good lineup for down there, and that is October the 6th and 7th. So, Anyway, we're going to be down there. We'll have our radio show going down there as well. So, it should be an interesting uh, program. She's got more speakers this year than she did last year. But, um, anyway. We don't have much going on. I said, like I said, we're working on Paracon next year. I've got a lot of people from this year saying that they would come back next year, which is good. And uh, got them lined up. So stay tuned. If stay tuned to the uh, go to our uh, tapping page or um, tapping page or. Um, 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 Darkest of Ghost Hunters of Carpenter County page uh, on Facebook and we'll be announcing the Paracon for next year and uh, next time uh, next weekend is Labor Day weekend uh, I think I'm having a big event downtown Van Buren called Junk Fest and uh, so uh have uh, got time to do come downtown Van Buren and uh, see everybody at Junk Fest. It'll be uh, like closing down Main Street and have all kinds of vendors. And then we're going to uh, um, also have, um, well, our stores downtown. So I will have our stuff out and broadcasting and all that. So come on by and see us here at our, our headquarters, King Menaces. Uh, but anyway, like I said, we are. Kind of, I'm just kind of <laughs> buying for time. I really don't have a lot on the Bigfoot stuff, so anyway. Let's see here. All right. Description of Bigfoot. People people claim to have seen Bigfoot. Describing as a large, hairy, muscular, bipedal, ape like creature, roughly six feet six to nine feet tall, or one point eight to two point seven meters. Covers in hair described as black, brown, and dark reddish. Uh, enormous footprint for which the creature is named as 
are claimed to be as large as 24 inches or 60 centimeters long and 8 inches or 20 uh, 20 inches or 20 centimeters wide. Some footprints casts have also contained claw marks marking making it likely that they came from unknown animals such as bears which have been five toes and a claw. Uh, according to David, the legend exists before there was a signal a single name for the creature. They different the difference uh, in their details both are between families in the same community. Similar accounts in the legends of wild men and found on every ca uh, continent except Antarctica. The most cultures have accounts of human-like giants in their folk history expressing a needing for some large larger than life creature each legend has its own name for the creature features in a local version of such legends may name men something along the lines of of wild man, hairy man, although other names describe common action that it was said to perform such as eating clams and shaking trees. Members of the Luma tell tell tall uh, tell tales about Chismaki, a local version of Bigfoot. The stories are similar to each other in general. Descriptions of of it. But details different among various families' accounts. Considering the creature diet and activities, some religion, regional versions tell of the most threatening creature, the Staya of Kawa were a naturally raised. Children were warned against saying, saying the name. Least of the monsters here and came to carry off a person, sometimes to be killed. In 1847, Paul Kane reported stories by the Indians about Kushkums, a race of wild men living in the park. Or peak of Mount St. Helen in south of West, uh, Washington State. The version has also been recorded, such as one by Elkin Walker from 1840. Walker was Miss Misery, who recorded stories of giants among the Indians living near. Washington. The Indians said to be, that the giants lived on and around the peak of nearby mountains and stole salmon from the fishermen's net. Or salmon, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I said, long night. Salmon from their fishermen's net. In the 1920s, Indian, Indian agent J.W. Burns complete local stories and published them in a series of Canadian newspaper articles they were accounted accounts told to him by the people of Chile and others others originally tribes mentioned the Sasquatch was real they were often by, uh, offended by people telling them that the, the figure was le uh, legendary. According to Ali's account, the Sasquatch pref preferred to avoid white men and spoke the Lilith language. It's L-I-L-L-O-O-E-T. Lilith language, I believe. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, mistaken. Of that name, uh, language, 
of the people of Port Douglas, British Columbia at the head of Harrison Lake. These accounts were published again in 1940. Burns borrowed the term Sasquatch from the Hawkman, uh, Hawkomelans, it's H-A-L-K-O-M-E-L-E-M. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not good with the word, uh, name, so. Uh, see, the uh, previous Sasquatch. He used it in the, in his article to describe the rhetorical single type of creature portrayed in the local stories. The name Bigfoot was first recorded by Americans in the late 19th century, also called Chef Bigfoot, Spotted Elk, oh, century. Spotted Elk, also called Chef Bigfoot, was a well-known leader who was killed during the Wounded Knee Massacre. in 1890. He was famous in his time and may have been the namesake for two fabled bears in West Virginia or West, in the West. I said West Virginia. I was just prolonging here. In West. Uh, in the late 19th century in the early 20th centuries at least two Enormous grizzly bears were widely noticed in the press and each nicknamed Bigfoot. Okay. They may have inspired the common name of the ape creature and been a matter of confusion in the early stories. And then you always get that, you know, was it a Bigfoot or a Bigfoot was a ape, bear, whatever, you know. The first grizzly bear, Bigfoot, was reported, reportedly killed near Fresno, California in 1895. After killing sheep for 15 years, his weight was estimated at 2,000 pounds. Wow. That's a big grizzly bear. Uh, from that, uh, uh, about 900 kilo, kilograms. The second one was active in Idaho in the 1890s and 1900s between Snake and Salmon River. Salmon River, and nearly supernatural powers with attitude to it. Nearly twice the size of an ordinary grizzly, Bigfoot for years have lived in tribal and of prime steer and no one has been found brave enough to clever enough to catch or kill him with a signal blow of his giant paw he kills a largest and beast animal he can find and he usually takes the pick of a Heard. He makes the signal meal out of the animal, and it is usually a meal that wouldn't provide a camp full of men for a week, or would provide a camp full of men for a week. Wow. And disappears, never to return to that local league again that season. Hmm. About one third of all claims of Bigfoot sightings are local, located in Pacific Northwest, with the remaining reports spread throughout the rest of North America. Most reports are considered mistaken or hoaxed, even by those researchers who say there are Bigfoot 
the, that Bigfoot exists. Bigfoot has become better known as the phenomenon in popular culture, and sightings have spread throughout the North America, rural areas of the Great Lakes regions in south and southern west, uh, southern eastern United States have been source of numerous reports of Bigfoot sightings in addition to the Pacific Northwest. In debate over the legendary of Bigfoot sightings researched a peak in the 1970s and Bigfoot has has been regarded as the first widely popularized in America culture, uh, American culture. In 2007, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organizations put forward some photos which they claim show the juvenile Bigfoot. The Pennsylvania Game Commission, however, said that the photo was a of a bear with uh, manes. And you probably know this one. Uh, they showed a, uh, I think it was a uh, game cam somebody put out and caught this big thing that looked like it had chunks of hair taken out of the back of it. And they claimed that the, it was a mama Bigfoot carrying a baby. And, the, and of course, they, the babies hang on to whatever they can, the hair. And pulls chunks of hairs out. And they're claiming this was, it was a bear that was, had mane on it. The anthropologist Jeff, on the other hand, says that the limb proportion of the creature was not a bear like, they were more than likely champies. Both Bigfoot believers and non believers agree that many of the report sightings are hoax or misidentified animals. Author Jeremy Clark that the Jocko, Jacko affair was a hoax. Uh, involving an 1884 newspaper report of a ape-like creature captured in British Columbia, his he cited research by John Green, who found the several British Columbia newspaper regarding that the alleged creature has highly noted that the mainland guardian of New. Westminster, British Columbia wrote so like I said you get into a lot of people that you know say that you know Bigfoot is, Bigfoot is a bear or, or you know and all that and now you get into what they're saying is uh, they're aliens no, I'll go back to this and I just kind of a definition of the Bigfoot. It wasn't really anything to do with the Bigfoot alien. It just kind of tells you what people think of the Bigfoot. Say hello to everybody out there watching me. If Susan's still with me. Hello, Susan. And whoever. She's the only one that's in the jump team, it looks like. Alright, let's see.
I say Bigfoots and UFO connections. Even though sightings of both Bigfoots and UFOs occur at the same time in places are not uncommonly reported by eyewitnesses, the connect, uh, connection of such event is generally dismissed. Of Just missed. I said, uh, but there's no up there. I'm seeing words. <laughs> hmm. oh, I'm putting, putting, putting words where there's no words at. Like I said, it was a long night last night. Even though it didn't stay out very late last night, it was still a long night. <laughs> All right, uh, I say it's dismissed as confidential, and any possible connections between the two phenomena is not considered a matter of serious inquiry. Both camp camps of research understands, so do not. Uh, so do not want their respective studies to be reduced to spectrum based on mere belief. Advocates of both mysteries seem to, to think that evidence of the reality of the other subject matter is famous and non-existing thus to entertained or connections to each other. Maybe the problem in making the connection between Bigfoots and UFOs lies in a set of, of each phenomenon in our in their new book Bigfoot exploring the myth of in discovering the truth do not claim we have solved the Bigfoot mystery. We only state we have evidence that strongly suggests the widespread occurrence of the uh, officially undiscovered large hairy primate in the southern United States. Beyond that, we point to the array of other strange phenomena associated with Bigfoot's sightings, including mystery, mysterious, mysterious lights, forms, in fact, we set our work apart from others' research and largely that we would take into account of the paranormal activity that seems that surrounds the creature in the areas we have studied where they are cited. Most of the researchers recalculate to, re, re, uh, associated to this. If the most we can say about the Bigfoot phenomenon without risking making individual assumptions is that the evidence is an undiscovered primate. Our research indicate there likewise that the most that the most we personally can say about UFOs might be that they are an unknown aerial phenomenon, quite likely the known as the flying object or the un unknown flying object, or that's a UFOs. Uh, which usually involve balls of light in various shapes, sizes, and descriptions. This being the case, we mentioned that uh, there is a different connection between Bigfoot and UFOs, especially if we uh, allow for their mysterious origins in nature. This general Observation was independently made as early as the as 30 years ago by such uh, writers such as John Neal and Dr. Michael Prisinger. Neal, who wrote, uh, known having uh, well known for having written the Mothman prophecies, <laughs> and I got that back here. We did that. 
Anyway, it's back there somewhere. I just seen it. I'm just going through and getting this. Um, of the uh, properize them, the term men in black or in Bible. Described what he called window areas where he consistently observed the range of unusual phenomena that occurred in specific locations in the popular areas. These include star-like light seen in the sky moving at high at speeds and angles impossible for conventional aircraft. Full moon-sized fireballs streaking low across the horizon. Small lights seen near ground level falling by the appearance of the classic saucer-shaped spacecraft. At some point in this bizarre phenomenon within the same area, large, mysterious primates would also show up. What Kill called Big Hairy Monsters, or BHM, sometimes followed by the MIB. Kill, Kill clearly thought all of these phenomena were staged. He called them in the manifestation of single energy sources, or the origin of which is unknown. The only thing witnesses saw that were real were the light forms. The BHM spacecraft and their occupants and MIB were hallucinations. Thus their appearance non- non -co coexistence cause each because uh, either the reactions within the perceiver's mind are actually projected in the observed by an intelligence perhaps malevolent outside force described as the energy Dr. Pritzinger of of Pritzinger who is well known for his God helmet experiment to produce dreams like sensations in laboratories tests such as such subjects <laughs> which the experience of the religion reveal learned toward considering this saucer and BHM to be fairly uh, hallucinatory. He called them transit phenomenon and took them to the brain reactions to s to the same kind of energy that occurred naturally in some places where the phenomenon tend to cluster cycling over long periods of time. Significantly he observed that these cultural areas where unusually light and hairy monsters are reported frequently centers around the 30 odd specific locations in North America where the ghost light phenomenon is known to have recurring for immediately long periods of time. He deduct the energy source from those lights likely in base phenomenon in paranormal culture areas which witnesses of UFOs and hairy monsters are reported. A full description of this odd basketball sized light from the is included in Rob's first book in the big ticket on the trail of the wild man. A large to a large extreme Rob extended the book to the com confirmation of much of Neil's and Priest of his observation. The big ticket in South East Texas has long hair and a full range of window or cluster of phenomenon. In the Texas case, the epic from the wide event seems to be a badgered road or badgered road case road ghost light that has been seen observed there for at least hundreds of years now. It is seen to 
it is it is seen to this day with regu uh, regulated on a largely uninhabited eight mile stretch of narrow straight dirt road that runs from near uh, Saratoga to what was once the site of the railroad town of Bag or Bragg. With the exception of the actual landing saucer shaped craft, Rob has personally experienced the entered of a, a strange lights Neil observed when he was the high school worker at, at, as a night watchman at the local country club golf course. He was amazed to see star-like objects tracing right, uh, right angles and diagonals and likewise making triangles and squares in the sky over the surrounding deep woods at speeds that a human craft could not possibly duplicate. It's talking more about UFOs than it is the Bigfoots on there. Every now and then the Bigfoot comes in there. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few months later, driving towards Vermont one night on a movie outage, Rob had... Rob, his day, and another couple also saw a large orange fireball they first, at first mis mistook for the moon. It was headed southwest in a huge low, or hung low, barely over the treetops until it slowly descended behind the horizon. Again, after only a few months, Rob and three of his buddies were driving north from Soar Lake towards Consuit. K O U N T Z. I like, like I said, I'm not good with the names. Uh, late one night, when one of the guys asked to make an emergency pit stop, they all pulled out of the, uh, piled out of the car, and Rob immediately noticed something unusual high in the sky and continuous stream of light was passing between what appeared to be two stars. One of them was slightly larger than the other, probably due to the being, uh, being closer to the observed than the larger star would pulse, increasing the size and a bit. And then the light would stream from it to the other star in the straight line for a period of about a minute or so. Do you believe Bigfoot and aliens are real? Or Bigfoot and aliens are connected? This here is just talking about UFOs and I really don't want to uh, read about UFOs. We're supposed to be talking about Bigfoot and UFOs. No. I'll read that on the UFO episode. Alright, let's see what this guy say about Bigfoot. Alright. Rather than being a mislink between man and a Bigfoot may possibly be an alien entity. This possibility is driven from evidence uh, in several solid UFO cases. The earliest clue dated back in 1888 when the cattlemen described an encounter with a friendly Indian in Hume, Bolt County, California. Uh, I know I mispronounced the name. Sorry. Uh, 
they led him to a cave where he saw a humanoid creature covered in long in long shiny black hair with no neck sitting ac uh, across sitting cross-legged one Indian told him that three of these crazy bears had been cast out of a small moon that dropped from sky and landed the moon then ascended back into air so it highly likely the crazy bears are likely crazy bear were really bigfoots and the moon is a spacecraft now fast forward almost a hundred years 1973 mrs Rifa she and her 13 year old son were sleeping in a trailer in Connecticut, Ohio and on a morning of October 21st. She arose at 2.30 a.m. to quench her thirst and noticed strange lights in the parking lot, adjoining parking lot. Looking out the window, her attention was drawn in particular to a cone of light shaped like a huge bubble umbrella about seven feet in diameter. Nearby she spotted a grayish ape-like creature with large downward angle snout, no neck and a sizable, sizable waist moving slowly. It then entered the light and about five minutes later, both ape man and UFO disappeared. Another incident occurred a few days later in on October 25th, 1973. A group of farmers in Fayette County, Pennsylvania, caught sight of a dome-shaped UFO that was brightly lit in about 100 feet diameter as the local drove t locals drove towards it they saw a pair of gargantry creatures covering with thick matted hair green eyes long arms and dangled below their knees a farmer's son fired a gun shot at the creature one of one of which raised its right hand in the air. At that very moment, the UFO disappeared. Then the two Bigfoots escaped into the woods and were never seen again. Dairy farmer William Frederick of Wisconsin was returning from a co-op meeting about 10.30 p.m. on December the 9th, 1974, when he nearly slammed into a global um, UFO on a road in front of him its button bottom half surrounded in fog inside a visual transparent dome was a six foot tall ape like creature with reddish brown fur covering its body except for the face It appeared to be operating a control panel as Bosick passed by the object suddenly arose and disappeared. In August 1976, after the series of UFO sightings around Rutland, British Columbia, Canada, several men and their children saw a hairy ape-like entity six to seven feet tall roaming about a mountainside they also found a clump of hair that was sent to the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police for identification the laboratory analysts confirmed it was a primate hair but significantly it could not be matched to any known species on earth 
Perhaps the Bigfoot creature are UFO pilots landing on Earth for exploration purposes or higher level ET area levels beyond some spacemen as guinea pigs to test our environment for long term survival. Or possible these Bigfoots are criminal entities being deposited on Earth as a form of Detention. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, my question is, do you believe that Bigfoots are aliens? Or do they just... Me, but personally, I do not think Bigfoots are aliens. It's just, that's just me. Um... So, but anyway, we're going to be working on our studio more here. Uh, you see we have different backdrops. Uh, yes, I don't know, Halloween's coming up, and we you see these things, but that's not what we... Uh, hey, I got a message. And I keep forgetting to mute that thing <laughs> every time I get here. I just don't think about it. Fitting me. Um, hopefully, one of these days I'll have a phone line that we can take calls. I just got the, I got the phone. I just got to get the line in here. Uh, you can't see it on there. Just past the guy on the coffin there. So, um, actually, it's hanging in the middle there. You can see that white line running down the middle of him. That's the phone line not connected to anything yet but it's there I get a crew in here and run my wires across through the ceiling and into the other room Anyway, um, well, I guess this uh, my show is coming to a close. But anyway, um, I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Uh, I know it's short. I suppose we run it to 2 o'clock, but like I said, we did an investigation last night, and uh, it's a. Uh, I was still trying to get things together here. And, uh. Put things together. I kind of almost ran late and almost forgot about the show. <laughs> But anyway, that gives you a little idea about Bigfoots and if they're aliens or not. We'll get into UFOs here later on down the road. Uh, I'm going to have, I'm try, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a phone line hooked up here where I can uh, have some people call in and talk. Uh, talk to several of them that was on my show. That they said they would call in and talk to me and, uh, run a show for themselves, you know, talk about different things here on the air, which I think would be good. Uh, so, uh, 
Hopefully I'll be coming soon. We haven't been really thinking about too much here lately due to our contract coming to on this building. We're kind of kind of debating if we want to stay here or move on. I think we're shooting more staying here, so I'm hoping so. But our shows will continue no matter where we get. Anyway, don't forget about the Arkansas Paranormal Expo in Little Rock, Arkansas on October the 6th and 7th. We'll be down there on the 6th. Uh, Tap and Crew will be there, and Arkansas Ghost Hunters will be there. Um, she's got a good lineup on the uh, deal. And uh, you just go to Facebook and punch in the Arkansas Paranormal Expo, and it'll take you to that. And then hit the link on the Par Arkansas Paranormal thing, and it'll take you to the people that's talking. Um, so, anyway. Uh, and don't forget, next weekend is uh, Labor Day weekend and uh, Junk Fest here in Van Buren, Arkansas. Come out and enjoy that. Come down uh, and see us. We're down here on 6th Street, right beside Boomerangs. Uh, you can see us from the Main Street. We've had several people look down here and seen our signs. So we got signs hanging up on the building. So you can you can see us. And plus, we'll have our Haunted Adventure signs out too. So all you got to do is follow them. Anyway, uh, that'll be next weekend. So, I want to thank everybody for joining us and keep tuned to us about Paracon 2019. And we'll be uh, uh, having that, and, and we're going to have all kinds of stuff next year. Uh, we're not going too big, but we're just taking a bigger step. We're just taking another step towards to get to our big where we want to our goal so next year this year we're small next year it's going to be a little bigger we're going to have a little bit more stuff there than we did this year so until next weekend i hope everybody joins me next weekend and uh y'all have a good work week this is tapping the arkansas paranormal network we'll be talking to y'all later good night everybody Yesterday's a permanent break to the age of the wheel. We ask for judgment. Well, here it is. Summed up in the fears of a long ago mathematical equation. In fact, within the next two hours and 17 somewhat minutes, humankind may become the unwelcome memories of a merciless god. Where will you be when the hands of time test their ultimate?